G'day, and welcome to our first taste of the new Lotus Amira. Now this is a bit of a drive with a difference because Lotus Australia has actually closed the access road to the Lake Mountain Alpine Resort. So rather than worry about the specs and the details and all that stuff, we can run through that later when we get the car back for longer. Today is all about driving. So I'm gonna stick the helmet on and tell you what it's like. So you probably know that the Amira is essentially the replacement for the Evora. So, not one of these hardcore track specials, but one of Lotus's more road-focused cars. But we've got a lot of the same parts. We've still got the 3.5 litre supercharged V6, though a AMG two litre four cylinder and dual clutch combo will be coming at a later date. But this still has the 3.5 litre V6 with either a six speed manual or an automatic. We've got the manual here, as well as the sort of track, but track pack's not the right word, but sort of sports edition. You can get a touring pack as well, but this has the Michelin tires and slightly uh, more sporty setup, I guess you'd say. So we've got a closed Alpine road ahead of us. So what's the deal? Let's start with the engine. The engine is, it's beautiful. I mean, it's got what, 300 kilowatts, zero to 100 in about four and a half seconds, but it's not outrageously quick but it's really nicely quick. It's an engine you can still enjoy on the road. But what's more, partly because it's supercharged and partly because of the way it's mapped, it builds. So we come out of this corner at about three and a half and it just builds, 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 builds. And you get more and more power the harder you rev it, which is always nice. And you also get a really nice sound. It's still a bit muted in this sort of stock guise, but I rev it out now. You get that lovely six cylinder howl. One thing the Amira has definitely improved on is gear shift. Exige and even Evora. The gearbox was okay as long as it is, you know, it was good. It was good as long as you didn't rush it. If you tried to rush it, it would just sort of get sticky and all that sort of business, but we've still got a bit of the long throw mechanical feel, but it's a lot easier now to do a quick shift and get the gear that you want first time around. Easy to heel toe too. The brakes are quite soft, which like it's disconcerting for maybe the first couple of pedal presses. Then you adjust to the amount of pressure you need. And because they're a little bit softer, it's quite easy to heel toe because you've already got quite a bit of pressure down to roll onto the throttle. I'm already in second. There we go, full throttle out of that corner, no problems with traction, but it revs out really nicely. Revs to about 7,000 RPM. Got it in track mode, which backs off the ESP a little bit as well. And I mean, it's still pretty fast. We're doing, what, 140 k's now there. So it doesn't muck about at all, but compared to, you know, the latest and greatest, this isn't necessarily a car you're gonna buy because it's the fastest thing on four wheels. You're gonna buy it for the way it makes you feel. Now let's talk about the handling. This is a Lotus. It's got to be all about the handling and it's lovely. The thing is, it's soft. Not in a way of like, you know, an S-Class, but don't think of this as like a track car. Over, over these bumps and ripples in the road, it's compliant and the body's probably moving more than you'd want it to in a car that's more focused, more set up for the track, but it also makes it really nice to drive. It's soaking up the road, it's working with the road rather sort of bouncing or bucking off it. Now that gives you some body movement. You hit the brake and it shimmies around a little bit. You hit the throttle too early. The nose will lift, you want to get some understeer. But equally, it's really nicely balanced. There's lots of grip. It can be a little bit darty off center. Occasionally it'll, the, the car will jink slightly. Maybe that's a combination of probably poor driving, you know, giving it a, a brake input while giving it a steering input. It can shimmy a little bit, nothing untoward. The other thing is the steering wheel get a little bit of kickback on mid-corner bumps. Again, nothing too bad, but if you just load it, it'll just knock in your hand slightly. But equally, I mean, the steering's beautifully weighted. You talk about not having power steering for purity and pure steering feel, but this proves, as did the Evora for that matter, that you can have assistance and still have beautifully communicative steering. Pitch it in here, there we go. 
So I guess maybe you think of Lotuses as like hardcore, things like the Lotus Elise Next Siege, but this is a lot more well-rounded. This could be easily a car that you just enjoy on the weekend or even drive every day. It's not uncomfortable, it's not noisy, and of course, we'll go into it in a lot more detail when we get it back for a full review, but the interior is a game changer for Lotus. It's totally transformed its, its usability and its sense of, I guess, premiumness, if that's even a word. So, hopefully you've enjoyed this quick first taste of the Lotus Amira. I sure had a lot of fun, so stay tuned for our full review.